Isaiah chapter number 11. The 11th book of the Bible would be 1 Kings. This chapter is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there shall come forth a rod. Now we saw the rod in chapter 10 verse 5. The Assyrian being used as a punishment for Israel doing wrong. And we went into great detail on that. Now we have a rod out of the stem of Jesse, which is the father of, of, of David. You have the Lord Jesus Christ showing up here. God's rod. And a branch, a capital B, shall grow out of his roots. Now a rod and a branch, that branch mentioned four times. And Jeremiah 23, 5 matches Matthew the king. Zechariah 3, 8, Mark as the servant. Zechariah 6, 12, Luke the man, the son of man. And Isaiah 4, 2, John, Jesus Christ as God. Many references are on this. And this is the, the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of David the sure mercies of David that God promises David that that throne will always have someone sit upon it that's of David and here it is you know it's been a little time and break the Lord Jesus Christ will sit on that throne and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the branch the rod so it's Jesus the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Jesus. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. He is God. He is wisdom and he is understanding. The spirit of counsel to go to somebody to know what to do. To get advice before you do something. And might. The spirit of knowledge. Now there's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Now, few times do you find wisdom, understanding, and knowledge in one verse. And this is one of the places, and it's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I forget which one Satan lacks. I believe it's understanding. I believe he has wisdom and knowledge. He doesn't have any understanding. Um... Solomon had wisdom and knowledge. But the three principal keys that you need to have is wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of God. And the fear of the Lord. And now, Jesus doesn't fear God, but he reverenced God. And all through his ministry, he gave God reverence. He gave God the glory. He spoke respectful and reverently to the Father, especially in his prayers. And shall make him of quick understanding, lively, understand, in the fear of the Lord. Now this is the character of his reign. His reign is going to give you fear of God. The Bible speaks in Matthew. In the millennium, <coughs> calling someone Rekha, full, is danger of hellfire. Punishment, capital punishment, is a determinant to crime, no matter what man says. When you got Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of David with a rod of iron, that out of his mouth, mouth that spoke the heavens and the earth, in Genesis 1, he can tell you, go jump into the lake, and you will. And if you have a problem with jumping into the lake, he'll command any one of his angels to bind you and throw you in. That's fear. That's where you walk very tiptoe around the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. He's not going to look at the color of skin. He's not going to look at sex. He's not going to look at age. There's going to be nothing to him. 
neither reprove after the hearing of his ear. He is going to judge by wisdom, by understanding, by knowledge, by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, by might, and he's going to do it righteously. And you're not going to bribe him. It's not going to be no false judgment. It's all going to be righteous judgment with the one that knows everything. The Bible speaks of this person, the Lord Jesus Christ, the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Here he knows. You can stand before this judge and you don't need a courtroom. He already knows. He knows the facts. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor. Righteousness. Doing right. Holiness. Well, I guess the poor don't get what they're supposed to be getting. There are set laws on how the nation was to treat the poor people. And reprove with equity for the meat of the earth. I guess there are some people, and when I mean simple, I don't mean profound or, or grotesque. I mean, they just do what they're supposed to do. They're not troublemakers. And they get in trouble. And there's no one to defend them. The Lord Jesus Christ will. There's coming a day of vengeance that men better realize. If you are robbing the wages of your employees, you're going to stand before God as a thief one day. If you are a liar, you're going to stand before God one day as a liar equal to Satan. John 8, 44. Because there is no lie in God. You will stand before the perfect judge, every man, every woman, saved or lost. Either the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. You will stand before God, and he will judge in righteousness. But the judgment that's going on here is Jesus sitting in Jerusalem on David's throne. And here's, what, here's what's going to happen. You got Jesus Christ, he is the center of the entire earth. Around about him, and I don't know mileage or anything like that, but around about him are going to be the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And in the cities and towns, there's going to be those Christians who have lived their life suffering for the right to reign. They're going to be given cities to reign. Now, you live in city X, whatever. You're brought before this Christian who is in reign in that city, and you do a crime. Well, if that crime can't be done by the Christian who is reigning in that city, you're brought to the apostles, probably. And the apostles will probably bring it to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how the law was. The law state, <coughs> you're supposed to bring it to the priests. Revelation 1 says we're priests. And if the priest couldn't do it, you were to go to Jerusalem and go to the high priest, go before God in the temple and seek God. Well, who do you do that with? Explain that to the Jehovah Witnesses. Because if you do what the law says in Millennium, you, buy, you take it to the priest and they can't do it. You bring it before God. Well, there he is sitting on, on the throne of David, Jesus Christ. And there's a sentence. You're either innocent and you, you let go or you're guilty and... Judgment happens right then and there. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Well, we saw the rod in chapter 10, verse 5, as an instrument of chastisement for Israel. Now here is the Lord Jesus Christ using a rod as chastisement for the people of the world of the earth judgments coming 
There's a sword coming out of his mouth, Revelation says. And they are devoured before him. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 and chapter 2, verse 7. There's no running. There's no plea bargaining. You're guilty, you're guilty. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. Now look, he's, he judges in righteousness. And that part that covers your loins is righteousness. What's the righteousness of the armor of God? I forget. You match all these with the armor of God, and you, you got yourself a great message. Helmet of salvation. What covers your middle part of your body is right. And faithfulness, faithfulness, the girdle of his reins. Being clothed with faithfulness, and forgive my voice, and righteousness. Forever being right and forever being faithful. The breastplate of righteousness. Well, wait a minute. The girdles is righteousness and the breastplate, well, your whole entire trunk is protected by being right. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Try that today. You're going to have lamb chops. And the leopard. These are Antichrist animals. The Antichrist is put down in the millennium. He's put down to second advent. Shall lie down with the kid, and that's a goat, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together. Man, you want to talk about a, a smorgasbord of a buffet dinner here. And a little child shall lead them. Well, David came across a lion and slew it. He didn't take it for a walk down the street. In the millennium, the curse is removed. Animals <coughs> are going to be right back where they were when they were with Adam and Eve. I mean, you can see the picture here when Adam named those animals. Lion walked up to him. He did pet the lion. Nice, nice lion. Rhinoceros came walking up. Rhinoceros. Wolf came walking up. There was no fear. There's going to be no fear. Listen, animals attack man today because of fear. A, a rattlesnake will rattle his rattle because he fears. It's gone. The millennium takes away that curse. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Now, not the bear feeding on the cow. Their young ones shall lie down together. Look at this. <coughs> and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. Now, you go back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2, and you find out that man and animals were vegetarians. Man did not start eating meat. Animals did not start eating meat until after the uh, Noah got out of that ark. So we're going back to the garden. We're going back to Eden. We're going back to the animals are going to be right. We're going back to the to vegetation. 
And vegetarians will, vegetarians will say, well, if you look at human teeth, yeah, they are vegetarian teeth. Because that's what we were. There's no doubt. The suckling child shall play on the hole of the ass. You're not going to do that today. Yeah, you give mom a heart attack if she saw her child playing with an ass. The weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. That's a deadly serpent. And when you read further, the only thing that remains for the curse of the serpent, they continue to eat dust. That never changes. But the fear is gone. Man's natural ability to a serpent or a snake is to... <laughs> Because he's the one that caused all the trouble. They shall not hurt nor destroy. <coughs> and that you forgive me. In all my holy mountain, Jerusalem, with the Lord Jesus Christ there, there's going to be no killing in Jerusalem. You want to try that today in today's newspaper? There were lions walking around in the times of the Bible. One prophet disobeyed God and he said, You're going to go out there and a lion is going to kill you. The lion killed him but didn't kill the ass. So Daniel. Sleeping with the lions that night is a type of the millennium. And then when the people who accused Daniel were thrown into the lions, they, man, they had mastery of them. They had a field day. Not so in the millennium. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Oh, you're not going to have street preachers. You're not going to need them. Because there are, I'm going to say a rough number, millions of Christ-like representations of Lord Jesus Christ from the church age. Reigning and ruling all over the world. There are the twelve apostles. And there is Jesus Christ. What will you need to do? You wouldn't need to say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There he is. You can't claim in the millennium. Hebrews 11.1 1, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Because you can't claim that. There's Jesus. So the whole world is going to know about Jesus one day. As the waters cover the sea. There's a lot of water. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> and in that day, second advent, there shall be a root of Jesse. Which shall stand for an ensign, a sign, a flag, a banner of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest, chapter 14, verse 7, Hebrews 4, 3, shall be glorious. It shall come to pass in that day. Now see, this is not the Gentiles of the church age. This is the Gentiles in the millennium. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the raiment of his people which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, and Shinar, from Hemoth, 
And from the isles of the sea, he's going to gather Israel back. He shall set up the ensign for nations <coughs> and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the, together the disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And yes, the earth has four corners. The envy of Ephraim, we saw Ephraim as a problem early in Isaiah, shall depart. Well, they're going to get right. The adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Uh-oh. Curse of in that curse you. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. They're going to get along. The family. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistine. Toward the west. <coughs> they shall spoil them of the east together. And they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. Complete denomination, complete authority of Israel in the land. And when Israel speaks, all the world is going to listen. Because that's God's people. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. That would be the Red Sea. And with his mighty wind, God controls the weather, he shall shake his hand over the river and shall smite it even the seven stream and make them go over dry shod, going to dry up the river so they can walk across it. And there shall be a way, there shall be a highway for the raiment of his people, Jews, Revelation 16, 12, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Oh, you mean that Exodus is going to happen again? Yes. Man don't live, learn from history. Man changes history and think it's going to work a lot better. You need to learn history. Learning history will get you to know what's going to happen. Oh, that day will be when the Lord Jesus Christ is the rightful king on this planet. <coughs> 